Hello and welcome to episode 11 of the How to Make Any Game Mechanics series. If you're new to the series, we randomly choose a viewer's game mechanics suggestion and I try to create it in real time. As a disclaimer, because everything is done in real time, it may not be the greatest method to create this mechanic. So don't take this as the end all be all of implementations. With that being said, if you're following along and run into any hiccups along the way, there's a link to the GitHub for this project, which contains every single episode in the description box below. So after spinning the wheel of pain, today's suggestion comes from Lemon, who commented, GG, thanks for the video. Here is a simple suggestion that fits for a 2D platformer game. If the player presses a button, the player's character starts falling upwards, reverting its gravity. Gravity's fall direction cannot be changed while in the air, and the character's sprite should be flipped vertically. I hope this helps. Wow, that is a very detailed and great suggestion. I actually have a few ideas on how we're going to make all of this work. So let's just head on over to Unity. I am inside of Unity and I created an episode 11 folder called anti-gravity and an episode 11 scene. We are inside that blank scene now. Let's start things off a little bit differently this time and let's change the main camera's background color. This blue color is pretty gross, so let's go to background type and change from skybox to solid color. And I'm just going to give it a gray color. And that's it, we now change the background. Let's head back over to the scene view and let's create our player. The first thing I'm gonna do is create a 2D object, sprite, and it is going to be a square. We can then click on our square, add a component, and let's add a box collider 2D. Let's then go ahead and duplicate our square Let's zoom out a little bit, reset the transform, and let's stretch it out, and this will be our ground. I'm just going to move it into place, and we can name it ground. We might as well go ahead and change the layer from the default layer to the ground layer. We can then click on our square, which is actually going to be our player. We can reset the transform, and we can call our square player. The next thing we can do is give our player a rigid body 2D. So let's make a rigid body 2D. Let's scroll down and let's also give it a player controller. This player controller was created in the very first episode of the series. So now that our player controller is added in, we can change the move speed to, I don't know, let's go three and use transform movement. This is very similar to every single episode thus far. So let's go ahead and let's hit play and just make sure our player can move and interact with the ground normally. So the character falls as he should and we can move around with the A and D keys. Okay, everything is working as intended. Let's exit out of play mode and let's move on to the main event of this episode and that's going to be the anti-gravity. Before we go ahead and start messing around with some code, it's worth noting that Lemon said in his description that he wants the player sprite to flip. Our visual for our player is a square, which doesn't really represent that all too well. So let's go ahead and let's remove our sprite renderer from our player. I'm then going to right click on our player and make a 2D object sprite square. And I know I just replaced a square with a square, but trust me, there is a method to my madness. I'm going to change the square's name to something like player visual. And then I'm going to create yet another square as a child. So 2D object sprite square. And then for this square, let's just go ahead and let's just change it to a black color. We can then go ahead and scale this down and somewhat just move it into place. Something like this. And then we'll just move it over a little bit. And this is now an eyeball. I'm then going to duplicate this eyeball and just move it over a little bit. So now we have a character that has a visual that we would notice would get flipped. And before we do anything else, let's make sure we put these eyes on the right sorting layer. So I just put it on order in layer one, and let's just change it to sorting layer player. We can go ahead and change the player visual to the player layer as well. It doesn't really matter for the purposes of this, but it might as well just be on the player layer as well. We can then hit play and watch our character fall and everything should work just as it was a couple seconds ago. We now have a little bit of an indication on which direction this player is facing though. So I'm going to uncheck play and let's just talk about the anti-gravity for a second. So if I zoom out, we can get a good look at our player and our ground. 
And what I'm going to be doing is casting a Raycast downward so we can detect whether we are on the ground or not. And when you hit a key, we're just going to change the gravity scale of our player to be negative one. The character should then fall upward. And if we flip the visual and we flip the Raycast as well, we should be able to detect the ground on the top. As per Lemon's suggestion, we should not be able to flip gravity while we're not touching the ground, hence the use of the Raycast. So let's go ahead and let's create a new script. Let's create a C-sharp script and let's call it anti-gravity. Anti-gravity. And when your script is created, let's open that up in VS Code. So inside VS Code, let's start worrying about one thing at a time. Let's go ahead and let's set up some sort of a ground detection. And if you watch the 2D jump episode, this is going to be a very similar process. So let's make a serialized field and let's make a private bool is grounded. This doesn't have to be a serialized field. It could just be private, but I think it would be worth seeing inside of the inspector. So let's go ahead and make another serialized field. And this is going to be a private transform. And this is just going to be the transform for our Raycast. So ground ray transform. And let's make yet another CLI field. And this is going to be the ground layer. So private layer mask. And let's just call it a ground layer. We're also going to be editing the gravity scale, which might be good to have in the inspector as well. So let's make another serialized field. Let's make a private float gravity scale. And then let's move on to some private variables. So let's make a private rigid body 2D RB, which is just going to be our rigid body for the player. And let's just make a private bool is flipped and this will just help keep track of what position our player is in and i think that's about all we need for our variables let's go ahead and start setting up our raycast and making sure we can use anti-gravity so in our start method let's get our rigid body so rb equals game object dot get component and we're going to be getting the rigid body 2d component we can then set the gravity scale of our rigid body. So rb.gravity scale is going to be equal to gravity scale. And that's just to make sure that it lines up with what we put in the inspector. We can then scroll down and let's make a fixed update. So fixed update. And inside the fixed update, we're going to be doing our ray cast. I'm going to be using a line cast in our example, but it works the exact same as a ray cast. So is grounded is going to be equal to physics 2d dot line cast and our line cast takes a few variables it needs a start position which will be our transform dot position it then needs an end position so we're going to use our ground ray transform dot position and last but not least we can put a layer so let's put in our ground layer and this is just going to be set in the inspector with our variable up here. And that's it. Our variable should be true or false, whether there's ground at our feet or not. Let's scroll down to our update function. And for our update function, we're just going to get a key press and then make sure we flip our gravity. So let's say if input dot get key down and let's use key code dot F and we are grounded so is grounded is equal to true we can now do our anti-gravity so if we are not flipped so is flipped is equal to false we are then going to make the character fly upward so rb dot gravity scale is equal to negative gravity scale and this should naturally just add a opposite gravity to our player so he should go upward toward the top ground. We can then make an else statement. So else, so if you are flipped already, rb.gravity scale is going to be equal to gravity scale. And last but not least, let's just make sure we set our is flipped value. So is flipped 
is equal to the opposite of what is flipped already is. So for an example, when we hit F and we are not flipped, it's going to change the gravity, skip the else, and then change it to is flipped. And that's gonna do the reverse for the else. Let's go ahead and save this up. And let's head back into Unity just to see it all coming together. So back in Unity, I'm going to click on my main player object, scroll down and add the anti-gravity script. We then have some values we need to fill out. So we have a ground ray transform, ground layer and gravity scale. Let's change our ground layer to the ground layer and let's change our gravity scale to B1. We can then make our ground ray transform. So let's right click on our player and create an empty and let's just call it ground ray transform. And then we're going to want to zoom in on that and put it at the feet of our player. Something like that should be fine. Let's click on our player and let's assign our ground ray transform to the ground ray transform slot. We can now hit play and we should be able to use anti-gravity just once. So let's hit play and my character is on the ground and you can see he is grounded. And then if I hit F, he is no longer grounded and he floats into the stratosphere. Let's uncheck play and let's go ahead and duplicate our ground here. And now let's hit play again. And now he should be stopped by the ground, but we should not be able to use anti-gravity again. And hitting F, we cannot. And this is because our ground ray transform is still at his feet and not above the character. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this ground ray transform flip along with our player a visual. So let's uncheck play. So how we're going to fix this is we're going to make our ground ray transform a child of our player visual. And then inside of VS Code, what we're going to do is just change the Y scale of our player from one to negative one. You can now see our sprite flips and as does our ground ray transform. I'm just going to change this back to one and let's go ahead and implement that inside our script. So I'm going to open up anti-gravity script in VS Code. So back inside VS Code, we need a couple more variables to make our player flip. Let's start by making another serialized field and let's make a private transform and we're going to call it player visual and we're just going to drag our player visual into the slot inside the inspector and we're also going to need a player visual scale so let's make a private vector 3 player visual scale and this is just going to keep track of our player visuals original scale so inside of start let's make sure we assign that so player visual scale is equal to the player visual dot local scale okay great all that's left to do is just flip our player so let's scroll down and when we are flipping to a negative gravity scale that is when we're going to flip our y so the player visual dot local scale is going to be equal to a new vector three and inside it's going to be player visual scale dot x player visual scale dot y and it's actually going to be negative so make sure you put a negative in front of that and then the player visual scale dot z and now inside our else statement let's say player visual dot local scale is going to be equal to the player visuals scale basically just resetting it to the default scale that should be all the additions we need to get our player flipping. So let's save this up and let's head back into Unity. Back in Unity, let's click on our player, scroll down to our anti-gravity script and just make sure we drag our player visual into the slot. So player visual into the player visual slot. We can now hit play and our character should flip. So I can move around as per normal. Let's hit F and my player flips. And now I should be able to move around as per normal and hit F and the player flips back. We can also just spam the F key and nothing negative happens. We can also move around in the air, which is also pretty cool. But if you wanted to only be able to move on the grounds, all you'd have to do is disable this player controller when the anti-gravity script is not grounded. But that's all the time we have for this video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and let me know a suggestion for a future video. Take care, thanks for staying till the end, and I will see you guys next time.